Welcome all. We're going to get started in just a few minutes here so that any people that are joining a little bit late can join us for the entire thing. Uh, if you have not used Zoom before, congratulations, you made it a whole year without using it. Um, but all of your controls are either on the bottom of your screen or the top of your screen. You can go ahead and do things like rename yourself, mute yourself, or turn off your video. This is going to be recorded, so if you do not want your true name or your video on there, please go ahead and change those things or turn them off. All right, just a few moments here and I will be going live on Facebook. So just bear with me so I can get everything set up and then we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks all for joining us on time. We're happy to have you here for our second year of Dabble's uh, online Zoom workshops. All right, looks like we are all set with the Facebook Live. We've got some audience members. All right, thank you all for joining us. My name is Sarah. I'll be uh, introducing Dabble or Dane Arts by Local for this session. Mark can't join us today, so you have me. Uh, today we are joined by Nora, Caleb, and Mark from Starting Block Madison, and they will be discussing their opportunities for artists as entrepreneurs within their organization. Um, if you wanna go ahead and introduce yourselves, Nora, Mark, and Caleb, and then we can go ahead and get started. For those audience members here, this is supposed to be an interactive conversation. So if you would like to speak directly to Nora, Mark, or Caleb, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question. Or if you'd like to, you can always go ahead and chat it to us. All right, Nora, welcome. Hi, Sarah. Thanks uh, Thanks for having us today. It's really an honor to be um, part, of, part of today's chat. Um, so my name is Nora Rowan Schmidt, and I'm the executive director at Starting Block Madison. I took over the role in J uh, July of last year. So I've been in the position almost nine months. Um, and we have lots of exciting things to tell you about Starting Block. Uh, for those that are not familiar with Starting Block, it's a 50,000 square foot entrepreneurial space uh, in the Capital East neighborhood of East Washington Avenue. I have two of my team members here today. So I'd like them to go ahead and introduce themselves. And then we can talk about some of the things happening at Starting Block and some opportunities for those in the arts community. Uh, I can go first. Uh, hi everybody, my name is Mark Yarmoff and I am the community manager here at Starting Block. Um, I have been with Starting Block for almost two years now, which is crazy to think. It's crazy to think that I've been here almost as long with the pandemic as without it. Uh, big milestone for us. Um, my role is specifically to coordinate our, uh, you know, what we do here at Starting Block, be it programming, events, um, and coordinate it with the rest of the Madison community, as well as, uh, as, well as build up connections between uh, our team and our entrepreneurs who work out of our space and, uh, again, the rest of the Madison community. Madison is a great place for entrepreneurs, I'm sure for artists as well, because uh, the networks here are very, are very intermingled and relatively small and approachable, um, which makes connecting to resources a lot easier, at least in my experience. I'm Caleb, I'm the membership manager. I've been with Starting Block for about six months now. Um, my role is largely to uh, create the uh, concierge type service that we provide to our members. Uh, and help assist with any member needs, that sort of thing. All right, awesome. So um, now that we've all introduced ourselves, uh, I guess we can dive in and just talk about entrepreneurship a little bit. Um, I had a conversation with Mark when I was first uh, hired at Starting Block uh, about how uh, entrepreneurship and the things that we do at Starting Block were also relevant to the arts community um, and how there could be a little bit more synergy and a little bit more opportunities for us to work together. And so it's always been my opinion that the definition of entrepreneurship is a lot more broad than some people realize and that artists, musicians, uh, designers, and many members of the gig economy have many, many skills that are very relevant to startups, uh, tech startups, and entrepreneurs that we serve in our space currently at Starting Block. A really great example of that might be a tech company who's putting together an app um, that is database-based. Uh, uh, let's say you're trying to uh, 
I can't come up with a good example off the top of my head, but let's say you're you're putting together an app or a database and you've got all of the coding and all of the other things that you need, but you're really struggling with layout, with marketing, with sound, with other things. And that's where relationships come in from the arts community. So what we're hoping to achieve going forward at Starting Block is facilitating um, meetings, partnerships, alliances between the arts community um, and the tech and startup world. Does anybody have any questions? Um, we don't have a, a super specific format today or an actual presentation. Um, we can answer questions. I'm not sure what some of the, I'd be curious to know what some of you do and what your interest is um, in starting block so that we can tell you a little bit more about what we do. Yeah, as a reminder, anyone who's in attendance can feel free to unmute themselves and go ahead and turn on your video if you would like to ask a question directly. Uh, just to kick us off, I did have one question chatted to just me. It is, uh, do you have opportunities for artists to display their work within Starting Block or with affiliates? Yeah, that's a really good question and something that uh, the team and I have talked about pretty extensively, actually. Um, there are a lot of different opportunities for um, photographers uh, and, and artists who, who have work that can be displayed on a wall um, within Starting Block. So we've talked about what that would look like, how we would feature those people, where we would feature them, and also um, how we can draw attention to some of the cool work. So it's definitely something that we've we've discussed is possible and it's something that we would really like to pursue further. Um, so if the person that asked that question would like to send us an email or uh, give us a call at Starting Block, we'd be happy to chat about that further. So Caleb, maybe you can go into some of the, the resources that we have for members so that people that are attending today can have a better idea of what it's like to be a member of the Starting Block community and some of the things that we offer to members. Yeah, um, so we have a lot of different benefits. Uh, one of the big ones is uh, the community of entrepreneurs and all the different people that want to work together to lift each other up. Um, we have several different meeting rooms, conference rooms that are all included with membership. There's no extra fees of any kind. Uh, very soon we're going to be rolling out uh, vision, dental, and life benefits for our members at a at low cost, uh, at, at a group cost. Um, we, uh, yeah. Well, Caleb, what are some of the starting rates for membership? So let's say somebody um, is working in the arts world and they're looking to get connected with more people in tech so that they can be supportive of some of those efforts. What does it cost to be a member at Starting Block? It ranges from $100 uh, for a weekend only membership uh, that gives you access to common areas, uh, conference rooms, stuff like that. Uh, flex memberships give you uh, Monday through Friday access with all the same benefits for $150. Uh, reserve desks start at $250, which gives you a dedicated space, a uh, lockable desk. Uh, and then from there, we go up into uh, group areas and suites, which uh, range to based on the size of the space. So Mark, do you wanna talk a little bit about some of our programming, educational opportunities, and specifically some of the social impact work that you've been focusing on? Absolutely. Um, so on top of all the, the uh, you know, offerings that come with your traditional working space, a big part of what Starting Block offers is events, programming, um, and other opportunities to learn. So being an entrepreneur and an artist, I'm sure, is, is particularly difficult, um, especially given all the change that's happened over the last year. So one of the things that philosophically was baked into our organization was the idea that on top of just providing working space, we would provide resources for entrepreneurs to learn. Um, right now, this is top of mind, so I'll start there, but right now we are working on rolling out our third social impact cohort, which is an opportunity for us to organize um, a cohort of a, a small number of social impact uh, businesses and organizations, not all of them businesses, to, uh, to give them access to some of the resources that we have here at Starting Block for free. So uh, three years ago when we started this, we realized that there was a, an entire 
portion of entrepreneurs which might not either typically see themselves being a traditional member of an entrepreneurial network or just might not have the access or resources yet to be able to be a part of our network. And so we created this social impact initiative to, uh, to reach those people. Um, it's really exciting. A big part of what I've been doing right now, we just finished our interview process um, and we get to work with some really amazing and di amazing entrepreneurs who touch on all sorts of different aspects of what you could even think social impact means. I mean, from uh, ac accessibility for disabled people to uh, racial, uh, racial justice and social equity, um, and even things like uh, sustainability with uh, Sustained Dane. We've had a lot of fascinating companies come through here, some of them artists in their own right. A great example of that is last year, we had a company called Bravebird. Some of you might be familiar with them. They are a, a media company that on the one hand represents uh, talent for filming and, um, uh, and, and, and actors uh, representing diverse talent who are typically underrepresented in all sorts of visual media. And on the other hand, they're actually also a, a production company that is releasing their first official film this year um, called Between the Lines, I think. It's filmed in Milwaukee with an entirely local cast, displaying a lot of undiscovered local Wisconsin actors, covering, it's a, it's a fictional narrative covering life during the pandemic here in Wisconsin. And it'll be at the Cannes Film Festival this year, which is really exciting for us. Um, I mean, to give you an idea, a year ago when Brave Bird joined this cohort, they had already started representing artists, but they hadn't even started on the filming aspect. Um, so it's, it's really exciting. And that's just one of the things that we offer. In the past, it is, uh, there has been a big shift over the last year between in-person programming and virtual programming, nothing new uh, with the rest of the world. You know, we're, we're trying as everyone else is to, to transition. Um, and so some of the really cool opportunities we had involved you know, the classic beer and networking nights uh, for startups, um, but also uh, really cool meet and greets with successful entrepreneurs or local community members. That, uh, that might have something to add. We've covered, in the last year, we've covered a lot of things covering the COVID relief. We have a cool event coming up soon on uh, the employer retention credit. So check that out. It's on um, our website as well as on Eventbrite. You can search it by our name. Um, and yeah, I think I've rambled on for enough. So I'll pass it back to Nora. <laughs> no, that was great. That's all really good information. So I noticed a couple of different questions in the chat. Um, one question that came up is, is there a trial membership and how would that work exactly? We don't have an official trial membership, but we would certainly welcome anyone to come in and work in the space as, uh, for the day as a guest and get a tour. Um, we would love to show you around, show you the things that we're doing, and then show you what some of the benefits of, of membership are. So I would like to open that up to anybody that's um, on this call today. Just go ahead and reach out to us at at starting block and let us know that you participated today and we'd be happy to host you for a day so that you can check some things out. Um, also in the chat, there's something about how has starting block pivoted during the coronavirus. Mark started to talk about that pivot just a little bit. Um, we went from a lot of in-person events to virtual events and those were all pretty successful. Um, as everybody knows, it's just not the same, um, but we are doing the best that we can to accommodate folks. Uh, I think one of the most important pivots this year is the development of a podcast. So we are putting together um, a podcast called the Innovate 608 podcast, and it's going to have the episodes will be released on Wednesdays. We're hoping that by the end of April, the first couple of episodes will be out and available um, wherever you podcast, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, etc., and the idea behind the podcast is that not every entrepreneur uh, is able to attend a session that happens at noon or at five o'clock or even at eight o'clock in the morning as everybody is doing different things. So the podcast will give the same sorts of information that we give in sessions, um, everything from forming an LLC to marketing best practices, um, creating a pitch deck, interviews with people who have been there, done that, founders, um, partners who have worked together successfully and unsuccessfully. And so um, we believe that having those resources out and available for entrepreneurs 24 hours a day, seven days a week will be a really effective tool going forward. 
Let's see, Sarah, were there any other questions? Does anyone wanna um, just unmute and, and ask a question? We would love to just keep things kind of light and, and easy this afternoon. Yeah, thanks. Uh, no other questions directly to me in the chat, but I really appreciated hearing from Mark about the social, um, was it the social impact cohort? Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was really fantastic. I did not know that uh, was something that existed. And I would actually like to hear a little bit more about it if you wanted to go into a little bit more detail and depth. I think it's really, really cool. That's something that I haven't seen uh, other organizations doing. So I would love to hear more about it. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to talk uh, for the rest of the hour on that topic. Um, I think I'll try not to, and I'll try to be, you know, <laughs> logical and concise. Um, and then one other thing, this is just a side note, but if people are interested, there are a few murals we have up in the office, and I'm in today, so I could take us on a walking tour, which would be wobbly and seasick inducing, but um, <laughs> gotta adapt, right? So on the social impact initiative, um, I think really what gets us most excited is seeing some of the companies that are coming through. So in the past, this is our third year. So we, we have sort of prototyped what the actual formula looks like, which is a small uh, cohort that allows uh, the companies to have an intimate feeling with their mentors and also with their coaches. Um, the distinction being the mentors are the ones who will follow and, and have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the companies throughout their, their time here, about 10 months. Um, and then their coaches come in for a, typically about three hour sessions uh, on a variety of topics, but the biggest ones are pitch practice and the ability to tell your story, um, impact management and uh, how, to, how even to think about social impact, um, how to collect data and how to tell that story. And then your business plan, which uh, takes on a whole bunch of stuff, but basically, um, covering the fundamentals of making a business plan, under, understanding what your client looks like. Um, and these are topics that you can find in really any accelerator across the US. Um, these are the first things that are covered with any entrepreneur or organization that's trying to, to really build themselves up. Um, we are not an accelerator. So uh, we, our niche and what we're trying, the, the need we're trying to fill is to help either organizations that are small and might not typically qualify for traditional accelerator or people who are so early stage that they really need help refining that idea before they even get started. Um, we were a nonprofit organization in general, but additionally with the so social impact cohort, the whole mission here is to help people who wouldn't be helped and hopefully increase the amount of social impact organizations that we have here in Madison. Um, this year, some of our, uh, we're doing the judging, so I can't necessarily comment on all of the companies, but some of the uh, no named exciting looking companies that we have coming in um, include one that's working on um, building up a, a local a multi agency center to help victims of sexual abuse, um, one that is uh, a, a, you know, a speaker who's been speaking since the late uh, 80s on the topic of diversity and inclusion, but is finally looking to build up that speaking opportunity into a, a full-fledged business um, and really start measuring his impact. Um, and then we have, <laughs> it's Madison, so we have two separate applications for bike companies um, or organizations who are trying to help either increase access to biking to underserved communities who, who are underrepresented in our biking population. Um, and one which is trying to build up a local uh, professional cycling team for, again, underrepresented communities. That's just a quick overview of kind of the tapestry of, of projects that we get to work with. Any additional questions on the social impact cohort, Sarah? And then otherwise, I think maybe we better wait until the end of the call for the walking tour, just because uh, it's going to be it's going to be the first time we do this, so it'll be a learning experience for everyone. But before I, we disrupt that, yeah, thanks so much. Um, I did see a few other questions uh, in the chat. I sent them off to Dora if you want to present them. Sure. So the first one is about how Starting Block shapes up compares to other similar organizations across the country. I'm not sure which similar organizations they would be referencing. Um, I guess so my follow-up question would be, is this in reference to entrepreneurial support organizations or is it in reference to 
um, entrepreneurial ecosystems under one roof. Um, so I guess, is that person willing to clarify? Maybe not. Okay, so um, how does starting block compare? I'm not really, because I'm not sure which organizations they're referring to, um, I'm not sure how to answer that exactly, but the services at starting block um, and the type of community that has been created there, a community by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs is fairly um, unique. Um, it's not completely original. There was a lot of research that was done as Starting Block was forming and getting ready to go, um, where work was done to look at similar entities in Colorado and um, uh, out east. But um, the idea of all types of support in one space for entrepreneurs as they grow their businesses um, it is not unique to Starting Block, but I feel like we do a really tremendous job of it. Um, we have several different entities who have started very small and have continued to grow in the space over the last few years based on the support from others in the community, um, finding funding, finding entrepreneurial um, mentorship resources, um, and then some of them graduating out of the space to other larger spaces as well. Um, other question, what do you think the number one thing that Starting Block offers the Madison community, especially artists? You know, I think um, the, the support system that we have at Starting Block, um, our willingness to define entrepreneurship more broadly than it's been defined in the past and to welcome more people. Um, the pricing, the relationships, I think there are so many different ways that, that we can um, benefit the, the um, community of artists in the Madison area and in Dane County. And I think some of the things that we're moving forward with um, benefits for members, um, as well as all of the education um, and opportunities to um, network, find funding, et cetera, should be um, considered uh, fairly helpful in the process for um, artists who are entrepreneurs and interested in our space. Awesome, thank you. It's it's so cool to hear you say those things because I, you know, um, <clears throat> Dan Arts by Local, this is I think our seventh year. And like our entire mission is basically to show artists that they are <clears throat> businesses and entrepreneurs and kind of see themselves as such. And I think that a lot of times when we're working with individual artists, they kind of like are missing that thing, you know, like they're like, I'm just an artist, like I'm not a business, but, and we're really trying to get people to understand that like your self, your brand, like you are a brand, you are a business in and of yourself, if you're trying to sell your art at all. And even if you're not, you know, like if you're trying to get shows or anything else, like you are an entrepreneur and you are acting as such. And I think that's something that um, Madison artists have really been getting a hang of within the past few years, probably before, but I've only really been engaged the past few years. So, you know, I really appreciate just hearing about the opportunities and the offerings and how you're able to help artists out. Yeah, it's really cool. we're, we're really passionate about eliminating any potential barriers to entry for entrepreneurship. And some of them are perceived and some of them are real. And so we want to be there through that entire process with, you know, coaching, um, uh, mentorship, resources um, all the way. So we're, we're really here to serve our members and serve the Madison community. And so when Caleb talks about um, membership services and concierge services, that really is what you get at Starting Block. It, it's not just a, a, a typical kind of shared office space. We are providing um, constant customer service um, and providing the best possible customer service and finding the solutions that people need for their nonprofit or for their business is incredibly important to us. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> what would you say, uh, just considering artists as entrepreneurs, what would you say like for a new artist who's just hearing about this, just considering themselves an entrepreneur, where would the starting point be? Like, would it just be simply you know, like set up a meeting with starting block, come in, like how would you engage someone and get them started? Yep, so sometimes it's just asking questions. So, you know, we receive a lot of emails, phone calls, and 
we, because of our network at Starting Block, where we have so many other entrepreneurial support organizations just within our walls, you know, so we have Joyenne, we have Generator, we have Bunker Labs, we have Capital Entrepreneurs. So there are a lot of different people that we can, um, we don't claim to always be the experts on everything. And so if we know somebody who has a program that's going to be beneficial, we're able to direct people to those resources. And then we also have really close relationships with the WEDC, with WIBIC, with the Small Business Development Center. So, you know, it really is our pleasure to take in those questions and guide uh, people who approach us either through some of the programming that we offer or to one of our supporting entities that can best serve their needs. Yeah, that's great. And Mark, I see you're dropping some links in the chat. That's awesome. Um, I'm, I'm familiar with some of these groups, but not with all of them. Um, and, you know, as someone who's been engaged in like the entrepreneurial startup and art community, it's like funny, even, you know, even now I'm looking at some of them, like, I'm not really sure what Bunker Labs is. So it's, you know, it's great to have this conversation, get these resources out there. Um, just another like fun factoid. I think that uh, I'm often at, over at Robinia, which is right next to starting blog, of course. Uh, and I think I saw, um, Ben, I can't remember his last name, but I saw some of his neon through the window. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how Ben's neon got in starting block? And was that in your space? And Mark you might not have been there at this you point. You know what which neon we're referencing? I, uh, yeah, I sorry. Don't. It's um I can't remember his last name right now, but it was the it was like the bright green like leaves one. Uh, maybe okay, I think I, I think I know what you're you're talking about. In so in the entry hall to the Spark Building, it's uh, it's not technically our space. This is the General American Family Building. Um, right as you come in, there's sort of a, a stairway that leads up to Starting Block, and then to your right, there's what could be described as hanging seaweed or leaves. Um, but it's, it actually changes color every day. It's not always green. And let me just check real quick to see what color it is today. Oh yeah, all fun it's great. Right? So I'll just I'll just show everyone so that we all know what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. um, was that was that the neon you were thinking of? You know, I might need to do a little bit more research on what I'm talking about, but it looks familiar. Right. I actually don't know the story behind that installation, but I can tell you for the videographers and photographers out there, it makes photography in our space very difficult. Right, specifically right there, because the light changes um, every day, so it's hard to predict. It's bright, hard to edit out picture, uh, colors like green and fuchsia. And so uh, in a number of our old staff pictures, um, they're basically desaturated to the point of being black and white because I couldn't figure out how to not make us look seasick. With all, just all the green light in those pictures, it was really hard to work around. Um, but it's beautiful. It adds a touch of color to the, to the lobby. Um, but that's an American family installation, which is, it's part of the symbiotic relationship of starting block with American family where floors two through four of the spark building. Um, American family is on the other floors, CNN, Madison might be moving in as well, which is cool. Um, and so on the first floor, there's the dream bank, which is currently closed, but is another community, uh, community focused um, initiative from American family. And then on the eighth floor, there's the American Family Institute for Corporate Social Impact, which is uh, also looking to, basically they're trying to prove that you can um, invest in companies and make a return on your investment while also prioritizing social impact to try and, and prove to traditional investors that you don't have to choose between one or the other, which is really cool. Awesome. In case anyone was confused about what I was talking about before, I'm dropping a link in the chat of the Tone Madison article. I was thinking of Ben Roscoe's Leafy Neon that I think was somewhere in your building maybe two years ago, only as an installation short term. It was originally piloted at Chroma where I was DJing. So maybe that, that's what I was talking about. I'm pretty sure it was there. <laughs> I, I think it may be gone. It, it probably yeah. was gone before my time, but there's a, there's a big, uh, a big the, the building was built in 2000 and finished in 2018 or 19 um so there it could have been during the, the um not quite the open house but that early period when not everyone was moved in and there was a lot of blank cement space that needed to be brightened up a little wow has it been that long you know i've 
I remember when that area was just pretty much a parking lot for Robinia Courtyard and now it's this like big beautiful building in Madison so it's I guess I'm showing how long I've been around for. <laughs> Awesome. Just as a reminder for any of the participants, if you want to engage in conversation, you're welcome to unmute yourself, turn your video, whichever combination, or you can chat us in the chat and I will go ahead and relay those questions. Um, this is meant to be informal, so you don't need to be nervous about speaking if you'd like to ask a question directly. I guess I'll talk about some of the other things that we're we're working on right now um, in our efforts to make sure that entrepreneurship is available and accessible to all people. Um, we are working on a partnership with AARP to start to acknowledge entrepreneurs who are over the age of 65. Um, the reason that this is really important is because there are many entrepreneurs who have had an idea for a very long time, but their nine to five job has prevented them from putting that in motion. Um, there are actually some statistics that show that most, uh, that there's a healthy number of entrepreneurs who start their idea and begin their, their business after the age of uh, 57. So we're also looking at some programming to make sure to, to lean in and offer some special services to folks that are interested in a, a kind of second career after they've left the nine to five behind. So that's just one of several things that we're looking at. And we're also looking at encouraging more entrepreneurship for young people. We've been doing some work with um, Girl Scouts and Madison Metropolitan School District to try to get uh, more kids interested in entrepreneurship, more kids in the space. Um, and we've also been working on making the starting block space more friendly to single parents. So there are more kids that show up in the space occasionally. Um, I'm a parent of, of two youngsters, so it's not uncommon for them to, to show up in the space occasionally. And so we're working on different ways to expose people to entrepreneurship on a lot of different levels. And it looks like Helen is saying that there are tons of people looking for second careers in the arts. Yeah, awesome, definitely. Does anyone else have any specific questions that my team or I can answer today? You know, we would certainly love to, to host each of you uh, in the space and show you around a little bit. Um, if there are ever any questions, we're happy to, to meet via Zoom or take phone calls. If you have um, questions or are interested in resources, we'd be happy to help out that way. Um, and it looks like Mark can probably give us a little bit of a, a, <laughs> a walking tour of starting block if there aren't any other thoughts. Okay, it's all silence. So I guess Mark, I'm gonna toss it back over to you for a, a brief tour. Awesome. I, um, what I was, yeah, I have, have to mask up because we're about to leave. Um, you guys can probably stay unmasked. Um, I am going to mute my, or uh, stop my video probably between stops just to avoid you guys getting a shaky cam version of me walking around. Um, but uh, we'll try to make this a more art focused tour of the space. We have a few murals that were done. Um, let me grab my key card. A uh, few murals that were done um, while, while the building was in construction. So uh, Nora, I'll let you take the question and I'll pop back on screen at the first mural. Yep. Yep. Thanks for the question here. Um, are there memberships for arts organizations? So there are a lot of different opportunities for arts organizations and we're happy to discuss those things. Um, Caleb talked about just a little bit some of the, the costs for membership. Um, we have very flexible uh, membership costs starting at just $100 a month. Um, and going up from there based on, on needs. We find the, the um, rates to be incredibly reasonable. Um, so we'd love to have conversations about that. And I do know that um, there will be some opportunities for uh, people to, to kind of test out the space for a day or two at a time. But I've also um, gotten wind of the fact that there may be some opportunities for some grants for people in, in the arts world um, to take advantage of, of space at starting block for at, as much as three to six months at a time. So when I have more information about that, I can certainly pass that along. 
Awesome. I can definitely tell you that that is going to be something that uh, people that we engage with as artists will be really, really interested in. So whenever that comes up, definitely share it with us so we can get it out to our members. Looks like Mark's at his first stop. Mark, tell us about this. I am. Um, so you, there's a bit of background noise, so I apologize uh, ahead of time if it's kind of hard to hear me. Um, but this is uh, the, one of the first uh, murals that we had done by the muralist Mike Leroy. Some of you might know him from his work on State Street after the, uh, uh, the protest this summer um, in, in support of George Floyd and um, against systematic violence uh, by the police. But this is a mur mural he did before that here in Starting Block. And it's at the very end of this long corridor here, which you would walk up on your way into the building. And so it's, <laughs> people, um, people say it's quite intimidating as you kind of come up the steps, you look down this long corridor and there's just this pair of eyes staring you in the face. Um, but it adds a little bit of a pop art feel to our building, a little bit more modern. I'm going to go on to my next stop. Awesome, thanks Mark. Yeah, that's a really beautiful um, mural and thanks for explaining the context and the artist. Uh, Nora, just something that I was looking at with the one of the pieces of paper on the wall. Do you want to explain Starting Block's logo? Uh, it's a little bit capital-esque, perhaps. Yeah, you know, I don't have all of the details, I am sorry to say, on, on the logo. I do know that um, because one of the, the main themes for Starting Block is that the space itself within our 50,000 square feet is all about creating meaningful intersections within the space. So I believe that the logo was developed um, with that in mind. So it's the idea of creating these meaningful intersections for, for entrepreneurs to connect with, with resources and um, be successful with what they're doing. Um, but if Mark knows anything more about that, we can ask him since he's been around a little longer. Sorry, I missed the question. So Mark, do you know the history of the logo? Um, here, I'll turn it around so I'm in front of the mural that I'm gonna talk about in a sec. Uh, sort of, it is capital inspired. Um, you can, I mean, that's pretty self-evident with the, the arrows in the four directions. Um, after that, I think we contracted out the design to someone and uh, went through a bunch of iterations. And I think, <laughs> so, it's, it's a combination between representing Madison and the Capitol here. Sorry, I'm out of breath. <laughs> um, and then the, the intersection. So the fact that all the arrows are connected in the same place, that's a big part of, of what we are striving to be. We're striving to be a hub. So the center where uh, all things uh, startup can connect, um, a resource that sort of accumulates um, everything in one place for ease of access for startups. Um, and that's pretty much as far as I go on that. But I can transition to this mural instead. <laughs> so this is a little tough to see if you're not here, but this um, is a, uh, a digital recomposition of a bunch of pictures taken of a transformer at the MGE e substation, which uh, some of you might remember, not last summer, but the summer before, exploded in a spectacular fashion. Um, which, uh, which was very, very dramatic for us here at Starting Block because it's literally right next door. There's a bunch of stuff going on, a lot of police presence. There was a, at some point the potential that it could be a terrorist threat. Uh, it was quite, quite the wild day. But my favorite part about this mural um, is right over here where there's a bit of glare, but that's not a scratch. That is, uh, <laughs> that's what made this really, really unfortunate for the artist. After spending hours and hours stitching all these pictures together, cleaning them up, he realized that he had a picture of pigeon poop right in the middle of one of his pictures of the substation. But it just goes to show these were taken, uh, these are real pictures and not a digital, digital uh, re reconstruction. Wow. That's a fantastic story. You know, I remember that day very well because I was throwing my annual festival Hot Summer Gaze at Robinia and, you know, Robinia is right next door to you, so also right next door to them. And yeah, I remember just the, the air conditioning in my house going out at like 9 a.m. I was like, oh God, what's going on? What's going on today? But yeah, that's quite a day. Um, looks like there's another question in the chat that I'll just go ahead and read. Uh, 
how can artists engage that are not looking for shared administrative space, but are looking to join in access to resources? Uh, I know you talked about it a little bit, but if you want to just kind of touch on it again, that would be awesome. Yeah, sure. So um, many of the events that we have um, and things that we do are, are open to the public. So it's not just membership based. So I guess I would just, um, I will share some of this information with you, Sarah, so you can share it with everyone else, but there are ways to sign up for our e-newsletter, which has a pretty comprehensive list of services that we offer um, to everybody, not just members, um, whether that's educational resources, um, different workshops being put on by our partners. Most of these are, are free of charge also, so they're available. And then of course, our podcast is gonna be a really great resource and that will be available um, to all people. Okay. Seems like we're in a bit of a lull in the conversation. This one, these are really better in person. So make sure to come back, back again when we're open. But um, this one, we don't have any information on, at least nothing written down. So I, I don't really know much about it, except that we commissioned it from uh, an artist when we were building out the space. And um, it kind of continues around the entirety of this space. That's a conference room right there. And for me, when I look at it there, I really can't help but see uh, those tests that determine whether you're colorblind or not. There's no, nothing to back that up. We don't offer that as a service here per se, but that's the first thing that comes to mind for me. Well, yeah, I definitely, I definitely can see what you're talking about. You know, we're the ones where they'll have green and red and there's a number hidden in like a lightly, a lighter shade of green. I definitely see the resemblance. Well, that's beautiful. Awesome, I'll just be sharing some uh, links and information in the chat for anybody here. Um, this is also going to be posted on our website, which is dabblemarket.com. That's D-A-B-L market.com. Why does it market, you might ask? Well, originally we started off as a uh, pop-up art market, jury market uh, for artists in Madison, Dane County um, to show their work, partner up with businesses, sell their wares, etc. cetera. Uh, so that's why it's called Dabble Market. Um, of course, we did pivot this year to the Zoom sessions, uh, panels, instructional workshops, et cetera. Um, but don't worry, at some point there will be pop-ups again, uh, perhaps later this fall, pending the COVID situation. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, so I'm at the last spot here. Um, and this is uh, one of the few pieces of uh, hanging wall art that we have here that's not a mural. Um, it's called Inspiration by Stephanie Jack. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with her, but she does resin art and she is from Madison, but currently living in San Francisco. Do I see that uh, green hue of the lights that you showed us earlier? <laughs> behind you mark yep that's correct it's everywhere <laughs> awesome thanks so much for walking us around the building too i know you probably had to do a little bit of stairs and stuff like that so i appreciate it <clears throat> it's definitely good for me <laughs> it's probably good for all of us especially working from home all right so this is going to be your last opportunity to chat any questions or go ahead and turn on your video and unmute yourself to ask it directly I'm gonna give about 15 seconds of silence. So start your typing now. If you have any burning questions, any last minute thoughts, or if you just wanna to speak to Nora, Caleb, or Mark, this is your opportunity. Um, as a reminder, this will be posted on our website, dabblemarket.com. Uh, we post all our recordings there from this year and last year. Um, so check those out. Uh, you can always sign up for our newsletter at danearts.com to get any information about upcoming art events, opportunities, grants, etc. from Dane Arts. Um, not seeing any other questions here. Last few seconds to go ahead and unmute yourself or ask them. Not seeing anything. All right, and if you do have any questions after the fact, go ahead and go to Starting Block's website and you can get a hold of Nora, Caleb, and Mark there. Nora, Caleb, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciated seeing your space, hearing about all the other opportunities, and I'm definitely going to be looking forward to some of those things you're going to be announcing soon. Um, it's been super cool to hear about the social impact 
Is that what it was called, cohort? I think, okay. So um, thanks so much for joining us. Hope everybody has a good day and hopefully we'll be seeing people in person later in 2021. Yeah, thanks Thank a lot you. for having us, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing. Our pleasure.